We're here at Montreal, um, the Montreal Audio Show, with Roger from Hyphenman. Uh, he's a North American sales rep. Right. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the headphones you have here? I see that you have the Sasfara um, and Sandara. The Sasfara, we have oh, the, and the HG right 1000. Here, the HG yes. 1000 version <laughs> 2, we have the HG version SE. I see. 1000 SE. Okay. Can you tell me the fundamental differences between the 1000 SE and the, I guess, the top of the line? Um, Basically, it's a lot of the same technology where we're using nano uh, technology on the diaphragms, but the magnetic structure becomes different when we get into the Susfara, uh, or as we improved over here, we improved this. The biggest difference between the version 2 and the SE is that this is much more efficient. So we've stepped up the, the ability for this to play on much smaller amplifiers and also even as efficient enough to play off some phones if you really want to do that. This gives a lot more versatility for people as opposed to having to buy a big amplifier and a big dis desktop unit. So that was a major difference that we made between the two units. Um, you mentioned that most of the headphones are becoming more efficient. Um, and that, But I found that even with the uh, recent headphones. Um, of course, you know, HG6 is one of the hardest headphones to drive, um, but even the efficient ones like the Edition X version 2 or, you know, the new Ananda, um, I found that they've benefited a lot from a external amplifier. Uh, do you have a recommendation for an amplifier for those looking to buy a headphone? <laughs> uh, amplifiers are a really big taste uh, as far as a lot of people is concerned. We've been showing here with Iris. Iris has been making some really nice amplifiers. It's a tube design that gives a beautiful warm sign, sound to it, but doesn't take any away any of the detail or information that's inside there. Uh, so that works really well. Most headphones do operate with some type of power behind them. So the idea that you can actually run a headphone with hardly any power at all, it's kind of defeating physics. It doesn't work very well. Um, but it also still comes down to a matter of taste and, and how you want to use it. Obviously one of these won't work very well if you want portable. Uh, it's a little hard to put inside your pocket. <laughs> but if uh, there's a lot of good portable uh, designs that are out there, our neighbor right there, Hi-Fi, Hi has got some beautiful designs. So it's just a matter of taste at that particular point. I see, I see. Um you know, as you know, I have a large collection of high human headphones because I just love them so much. I was wondering, you know, I, I can never pinpoint and find my best, you know, I can't, I can't really say this is my best headphone. Of course, I love the Edition X version too, and I say it's the best um, to my viewers, but um, I, I, I just love every single one of them for a different reason. And I'm sure the viewers know that as well. I was wondering, what is, if you have to pick one, and I know this is a hard question, what would be your favorite headphone and why? Uh, on the Hi-Fi Man yes. line? Boy, that's a tough one. Um, truthfully, it's between two headphones. Uh, the 1000 SE, I really like. I find it very open sounding, uh, nice detail all the way around, and easier to drive. So it makes it much easier for me to quickly grab a hold of something and listen to it. Uh, so for me, that's very much so. I always, every once in a while, go back to the Savara because there is a timbre there that just, it's so lovely that I just fall. I just fall back and relax and, and enjoy it tremendously. It is a difficult headphone to drive, a lot like the HE6s are. But when you are driving it properly, it's like, <sighs> and that's something I really like. So truthfully, those are the two that I really fall in love with. And it's, it depends upon my mood, which I think is what most people end up doing. You have your mood one day, you want this, you have a different mood another day, all of a sudden that's your favorite. And I see it's the same thing for you. <laughs> yes, it certainly is. So my question is, you know, Hyphenman has been creating a lot of reference headphones, HE6, you know, these are all new technologies. When I remember, I still remember, I still have the original HE6, believe it or not. And when the first ca uh, headphone came out, you know, it was new technology, the planar magnetic technology, it was hard to drive, but people were trying to drive out of speakers. It was a wonderful time. Um, and people were doing DIYs and, you know, modifying them. It, certainly, Hyphenman is an industrial leader in this, in this aspect. So my question is, what is the next step in headphone technology? What are you, what's the next thing that Hyphenman is working on, if you can give me an insight? Um, yeah, now we're asking some trade secrets. Uh, basically, what we're, we're doing is we're looking at where the entire industry is moving. Uh, and 
a lot of the technology that has changed with Hi-Fi Man uh, a lot over the last few years is settling down. So nanotechnology is settled down to some particular aspect. Magnetic designs with neodymium and super neodymium and all those types of things have also settled down. Um, nanoparticle technology is also settling down, what you're coating materials with and stuff like that. So, but the industry as a whole is changing in the sense that in the portability, as we talked a little bit earlier, and Bluetooth is a big part of that portable aspect of it. Uh, Bluetooth hasn't been very popular, uh, mainly because the compression ratios and the decompression has been really pretty poor. Over the last year or so, there's new algorithms that are coming that are operating in the same bandwidth, but that new tech uh, algorithms are giving us the chance to be able to transmit 2496 to the headphones. So we're now taking the ability to take high res and send them through Bluetooth. Using that, using Hi-Fi Man's ability to develop really tiny amplifiers that are really high quality, being able to do high quality DACs and using those DACs, we're now looking at being able to do high-res high Bluetooth in headsets, both magnetic planar design and other designs that are out there. I see, that's very promising. So everything is moving towards Bluetooth, even Hi-Fi Man headphones. Even Hi-Fi Man that is, that is very promising. Bluetooth. I see. So that kind of gives you an insight to what you know is going to be available in the next few months or so, I guess. So, is there anything else that you want to add to this interview? Uh, the only thing is, is High Five Man will continue looking at the future and trying to adapt to it. We will look at the possibility of doing some small Bluetooth speakers that people can use in their homes when they're not using their headsets. Uh, but we'll continue moving and supporting all of our customers and our dealers. Speakers. That sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look forward to it. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you, Jack.